just one minute left and we are waiting for all the other people so just one minute I'm really happy to see you today and thank you that you have chosen my webinar. Great. Put plus in the chat, guys, if you can hear me. Hello, hello, hello to everybody. I believe that you're okay and you're really happy. You have a very good mood, as I am. <clears throat> okay, I believe that you can see my screen. So and everything is okay, and we can start. Yes, great. Okay, I'm really happy that you can hear me. That is okay. So guys, I think we should start and uh, I'm really happy to see you to uh, welcome you on my webinar, which is called Tips and Tricks Speaking with Flying Colors. According to your questions, which you were writing um, while you were registering for our uh, webinar, I understood that this question, so my webinar will be really useful for you. So guys, uh, I'm really happy and uh, I'll try to be your saver in this thing. So uh, nowadays, I'm really sure that lots uh, of people and lots of pupils right now, uh, if you ask them, what are you going to do uh, at your speaking exam in English? So the answer will be something like, God knows. So, and God knows, but never tells. So I'm not God, but I'll try to tell you what to do. So this is, uh, in my opinion, this is the easiest part of the Russian national exam, and I'll try to prove you today that it is so. So, the first thing I should start is that my name is Alexandra Leonidovna Chalakhan, and I'm a teacher of Institute of International Education. So, um, can you see that my slide switched now? Oh, yes, right now, yes. So, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So my bachelor degree uh, was really interesting. I changed two universities. So because I moved. So my first university was Cuban State University. And I loved that very much. It was a great experience. But later I came to Southern Federal University. And I finished that. So I'm a philologist. I can speak English and French. And also I know literature. Elio. So uh, then I continued my education, and that was our perfect university, Moscow State Pedagogical University and Modern Technologies in Teaching English. So I have a great experience in teaching for seven years. Honestly, I started this career at 16. So because I had such a level of English that uh, gave me such an opportunity to train different children, maybe to teach them. So. Uh, I also had my own language school even so and uh, I had such an experience that I worked at school so that's why I can definitely tell you that I know what you need so that's why uh, I'll try to help you to pass your exam and uh, I want to be ready I want to be ready I'm ready to listen to your feedback about that so I think uh, let's start so now, uh, let's start. Yeah, definitely. So let's start about part one. Part one, this is assessment criteria. So why do we need this part? First, I think that this part uh, is really important for you to know what should you do? What is your goal? And first, first task is reading. So I think it is the easiest task in the whole exam. So, and that's why we need uh, to understand what should be did. So our goal is one point. So this is maximum, which we can take from reading. What should you do? So you should have only logical pauses. What does that mean? If you have a compound sentence, yeah, you shouldn't do like this. So my name is, uh, that will be really strange. So that's why it's a mistake. 
So, and that, that is called artificial pauses. So, and this is zero. We don't need that. Then we should have perfect pronunciation. So, okay, perfect, it's something I would say uh, really difficult, but we need to try to do that. So we should imitate British or American speech a little bit, okay? So uh, what is, uh, okay, what, what else can you get for one point? So five mispronunciations which don't change the word meaning. What does that mean? For example, we have the word weather, so it should be pronounced like weather, but you read like weather. Weza, you know, so you don't have incidental sound and that is a mistake. So, but it's okay. If you have such five mistakes, that is one point is yours. Two mispronunciations which change the word meaning. So that means you pronounce word uh, and uh, it has absolutely different meaning. Uh, for example, like I would say, um, I forgot what I would like to say, so I forgot, and I'll tell you a little bit later, okay, when I'll remember that. So, what is it stammering? Look at the uh, right one, uh, and there is artificial pause. What is artificial pause? I've told you about that. When you're trying to think how to read, how to do that, so this is an artificial pause. What is it stammering? Stammering when you're doing like this. My uh, name mm, is, uh, uh, this is stammering, so zero guys definitely zero okay word stress for example my favorite example when we are talking about word stress it's like mm, russian word hotel so in english it sounds like hotel but definitely your favorite mistake to say hotel hotel is your favorite one so this is a mistake definitely and so as we have discussed too many mispronunciations let's go on if we talk about task two questions also i don't think that it's very difficult so we need to try to do that okay so one point what is it one point uh perfect grammar so usually you ask uh, questions in present simple or present continuous so they are so basic that i'm sure that you are perfect there so that's why you don't need to think too much about that so also, you should have, um, you shouldn't have, but you can, uh, mispronunciations, which don't change the word meaning. I've told you about that. Uh, then, even don't look at that, zero points, yeah? So, wrong question. If you have, for example, somebody is asking you about the location, and you ask about how was the party, so this is a mistake, definitely. Okay, wrong grammar, and of course, mispronunciations, which change the word meaning. Let's go on. Ah, I, I remembered. So, guys, mispronunciations which change the word meaning. For example, uh, when you devoice sounds like food, for example, I like Jap Japanese food, but you say, I like Japanese food. So, you see, it changes. So, that's why. Let's go on. The most difficult tasks, in your opinion, I think. So, my slide has some problems. Okay, just a second, guys. I'm extremely sorry. Okay. I'm ready for you to continue. Okay. Okay, assessment criteria, task three and four. So, uh, as you think, they are the most difficult. Guys, I'll prove today that it is not so. Definitely. You can't even imagine how easy it is. So, what is our goal? I uh, didn't try to show you what we shouldn't do because it will be obvious. Yeah, you have goal, and if you don't have these things, you have zero. So, what is it? So, your goal is 12, 15 sentences. So, it should be like a story. A very big, no, not very big, okay, average, yeah, something average, so story. It shouldn't be like, I see and I tell, no. They show just your flow of speech, they show your imagination maybe a little bit, so they uh, would like to listen to a very interesting story. So, and this story can be prepared in advance, guys. I can tell you it is a secret and I'll show how to do that. So you should have an introduction. It's very important because when you start like, 
I see picture number one. So that's strange, really. So first you need to greet person whom you are talking to. Yeah, you will have a laptop, you'll have uh, your, I don't know, uh, ear, ear, uh, ear pods, I don't know, so everything you can have. Uh, but you should say hello, first of all, yeah? So as some kind of politeness, I don't know. Okay, after that, you should have conclusion, okay? Something like, thank you, goodbye, yeah? Okay, again, I'll show it. Then, linkers. What is it, linker? Linker, it's something like, you know, definitely. However, in addition, all these things, they're very easy and very basic. So, very good grammar. We'll talk about it a bit, late, a bit later. Pronunciation, uh, two lexic grammatical mistakes, two mispronunciations. So, and let's go to tasks and tricks. So the first task, which is extremely easy, it is reading. So what is important for you in reading? It is very important for you to take the intonation. You shouldn't read like a very, I don't know, tough boy or girl, like you don't know English, like very Russian accent. Yes, it's really clear for everybody and even for the examiner that you won't have perfect pronunciation you won't have perfect phonetics but guys how can you catch how can you catch your attention of the examiner easily you should read with the intonation it is very important for example it should be like a ladder you know like so birds live everywhere so can you hear a full stop they vary from pigeons in big cities to penguins in the antarctic However, all birds have similar features. So can you hear? It should be like rise, fall, rise, fall. And it really catches. It really catches. I can definitely tell you. So it shows that you understand what you're reading, even if you don't understand what you're reading. It shows that you understand what you're reading, definitely. So uh, what is very important? Commas. You should have pauses before commas, before conjunctions like and, so, but. It is very important because you need to subdivide sentence so you have the first part and you have the second part. And it shouldn't be like, look, 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 look. that's it. So first, when person is listening, he or she should understand what you're reading about. It is very important. So, and this, this thing can be reached by the intonation. Also, what about consonant devoicing? Definitely you should do that. I meant uh, this thing when I was talking. Yeah, I told you about food, food. It is also a mistake. And you will have zero because, uh, let it be, mm, uh, I have a very beautiful leg and a very beautiful feet, yeah? Like, like this. But when you can say feed, yeah? I have very beautiful feed. So feed has absolutely different meaning. So that's why, guys, it's very important to pay attention to your speech pronunciation because it can play really bad trick with you. Okay, so I want you to take all your questions which you have and at the, at the very end, I'll answer all your questions, I promise. So yesterday you got uh, lots of materials from me. So uh, what do you need them? First of all, I sent you uh, a folder with different uh, recordings and PDF book. Guys, this is your helper to train your skills in reading. When you open this text, you listen to the recording for the first time, yeah? For the first time, you make some notes, maybe intonation, maybe some things, uh, how to pronounce or some tricky things, I would say. Those texts which you have, they are much more difficult than you will have at the exam, definitely. But if you, do, if you do all these texts, you will come to the exam and say, that is easy, definitely. I'm sure, guys. So it will be easier for you. Just train your skills. Moreover, you can use your voice recorder. You can read and it will be recorded. After that, you listen and yourself, you will understand what's happening. So what problems do you have? What you don't understand or what you understand? What is good or what it, but was it bad, for example, yeah? So that's everything. Everything can be done, so it's easy. As for me. Let's go on. Questions. 
also very easy one. So your task is you have one and a half of minutes yeah, to prepare and you have 20 seconds for one question. You can't imagine it is more than enough because uh, 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 I don't know, asking question, it's something about five seconds maybe and you will sit and wait like, mm, should I do it? Oh, guy, maybe I should stretch. No, guys. So you should wait because it's really easy. So uh, your task is to ask questions. Imagine that you're calling somebody out and to uh, ask questions. First, strategy number one, easy to win. I called it like this. So uh, in a criteria, we don't have any, I would say, wishes how to ask questions. So, and even if you don't know how to ask, you can start with the easiest one. What's the minimum age on a bicycle trip? What's the preparation for this trip? What's the number of people in the group? What about the accommodation for the night? What's the duration of the tour? So grammatically, it's correct. Guys, you are clever. So it's easy, definitely. But I don't recommend to do that because it depends on the examiner or maybe somebody uh, will say mm, it was too easy so that's why he, he or she can just give you one point and that's it but it is also possible so it's possible so according to criteria it's okay absolutely you can do another thing to show off and to show that you know all questions properly so you can do it like this how old can be the youngest traveler it is the first question the second type how should we prepare for that trip third how many people are there in the group? Four, do you have any accommodation for the night? Five, how much time does this story take? So here you showed all different ways, like special question and a common one. You can even use tag question, like, um, isn't it, didn't we, don't we? It's also possible. It's very easy. Your task is just to differentiate the right verb here. Okay. So uh, one more thing would, uh, uh, which I'd like you to tell, uh, the most popular things which you can find in a task. Usually they ask you to ask questions about location or discounts for students, the most popular one. How can you do that? First, what is the location? Or where is, what is your location? Huh? What is your location? What's your address? Where are you? Where is your center? Very easy one. Discounts for students. Do you have any discounts for students? Just remember this thing and everything will be okay. So it is really popular. It is really easy. And I don't think that it will cause any problems. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go on. I have some problems with my, okay, uh, yeah. One thing I would like to add, if you don't know what, what should you do? Sometimes it happens, really. For example, it is really difficult to differentiate what is it accommodation. So you don't have context, you don't have anything, what should you do? It's easy. You, you say, what about, what about accommodation? So, and in 99% of questions, it will be definitely okay. So you ask, what about this thing? And that's okay, really. So if you don't know where, you can use this um, tricky thing, which will definitely help you. Okay, let's continue. We come to my favorite tasks, my favorite one and the easiest. I also, by the way, I forgot to tell you about questions. In my materials, I sent you a word file with the grammar structure, so how to ask questions. If you have any problems with that, please guys pay attention to that paper. It is given there in detail and you won't have any problems. Okay, task three. Your task is to choose one photo, yeah, and to describe it as if it is yours. So I don't think that it will cause uh, any problems when you will when you open my cliches. So the first cliche speaking task three, your photo album. You have different structures of it. I'll explain what do they mean. 
they cover all points, absolutely all points which you have here in the task. And uh, your task is just to learn, and that's it. Okay, so first, zero one. Well, let me tell you about some photos in my album. I have chosen photo number one, let it be, yeah? You greeted person. You started your speech. This is an introduction. Then, point number one. I took it last year. So we start covering all these points which examiner wants from us. So first one, I took it last year in winter, let it be. My friends and I were having a party. It was quite an experience. So what is really important? Your task is to learn it by heart, to learn that you shouldn't stumble over your words. It shouldn't be like, well, uh, let me tell you, uh, I forgot, I forgot. No, you have enough time, guys, and we have such interesting conditions, yeah? Learn it, learn it by heart. You should know, you should know it like this, so your mom comes to you, uh, wakes you up in the morning or uh, at night, and you should start, well, let me tell you a few words about my photos in the album. It should be like this. It doesn't mean that you should do it at the exam like this, and that's it. No, it would it will be absolutely clear that it is artificial, that you have learned and you came to show your good memory. No, that's not our thing. You should do it like this. You should do it as if you are sitting and you are just right now inventing something like, well, let me tell you about some photos in my album. I have chosen photo number one. So it should be like this. It should be natural. It shouldn't be like you have learned it many times and you have seen that and that's it. No, it should be as if it's your story and you're telling it right now and you didn't have any cliche. Uh, it is not forbidden, but you shouldn't show that you had. So after that, uh, the first thing we have covered where, what you're doing here yeah, and when it was taken. After that, you start describing the picture. As you can see, there are my friends in the picture. So she or he, his occupation is, it, it is just for you. If you want, you can put this sentence about the occupation. It's not obligatory one, but as, as you wish, definitely. So if you, at the exam, you will be extremely nervous. That's why I again strongly recommend you to learn it by heart by heart, definitely to learn by heart, because when you, when you sit, you will like, oh my God, what's happening? What should I do? No, but very important, if you again, you uh, repeat the same thing, for example, because of nerves, as you can see, uh, there are my friends in the picture, then you forgot what you said, and you say again, as you can see, there are my friends in the picture, you will have one minus one point, and that's really bad. So that's why, Follow your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Then, so you have described who is in the picture. You can add any facts, guys. Nobody will check what's there. You can say, oh, this is my friend. She's a teacher and she's really crazy about her job. And that's okay. Nobody will check what's happening. Then you, again, you continue describing what's happening in the picture. You can add any information about their professions, their hobbies. Even you can say that uh, I'm taking this picture and we are all enjoying ourselves. So you are showing off that you are so clever, successful and great people. Yes, that's great. So grammatically, it's okay. It answers all the points which you can see uh, in our task and that's so that's your point, so everything is really ready. Okay, uh, then, two most important parts. First, why you keep the photo in your album? It should be like this. You may wonder why I took this photo. Give some emotions to the examiner. I'm sure most of pupils, they will be like this. So I took this photos because, so can you imagine how many listenings one person will be listened to lots of lots of your speeches it will be boring and you you will be that person who gave him emotions or her like you may wonder why i took this photo well as a matter of fact i had always wanted to keep such a picture in my album you see 
your intonation, your emotions, they give, definitely, they give you more points. So, as well as that, I thought it would be great to remember this excellent time. It was unforgettable. Guess why I'm showing it to you? So, like a rhetorical question. Guess why I'm showing it to you? It's as easy as ABC. So, emotions, guys. I want to share my emotions about this wonderful time with you. Moreover, I would like you to join me next time I do something like this. And it will be bring back good memories when you open your old photo album. So you are trying to catch examiner's idea, uh, attention, sorry, attention to, to, hey guy, you are there, let's go with me. So, and the examiner should have such a feeling, oh my God, I would visit something like this with this person because of your emotions. So, and conclusion. Well, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Guys, if you do like this, seven points are in your pocket, definitely. Moreover, one more tip for this thing. It is very important to use present continuous when you are describing the picture because you're describing it in the real time. It happens right now and you look at the picture and you see what they are doing right now. So I can't see what they are. They are drinking tea. So as you can see in the picture, there are my friends. So they are drinking tea and discussing some news. So that's your point. So you're describing the picture in present continuous, but very important. If you want to mention hobby or something like this, interests, age, it should be present simple definitely because it is a regular action. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Four, my favorite one again. So you have two pictures, you have a particular structure according to which you need to talk. And uh, your task is to compare these two pictures. So what should you do? First, uh, look attentively at these pictures. Your task is, guys, don't read the task. I can promise it won't be changed. So when you have this time to prepare, don't read the task. It will be definitely the same. Just spend these seconds, they are like gold for you. Spend these seconds when you're talking, well, how to talk, planning your answer and uh, maybe catch some vocabulary, I don't know, okay? So, again, we should start with the introduction. Well, let me tell you a few words about the two photos I see in front of me. Be attentive that if we compare here in this slide, the introduction, and in this slide, they are absolutely different. Why? You shouldn't do it the same because the examiner will be definitely uh, sure that it was invented in advance. So that's why, again, I want to tell you that you must, you must speak like as if you're inventing right now. So you have such a great flow of speech and even if you don't have it. So even if you're not sure in your English at all, the main idea is to learn by heart because you have it, yeah? You have what to learn. So uh, I believe that I'm your saver here, definitely. So, and uh, you do it, just train, train, guys. Voice recorder, listen to yourself, and no problems will be at the exam. So, the uh, absolutely different introduction. After that, the two are the pictures of. So you describe what can you see in these pictures. You can say that in the first picture, you can see this one. In the second picture, you can see that one, for example. And you should also mention when it was taken. Uh, taken last year in summer. Maybe such a situation when the first photo was taken in winter and the second one in summer. You should say, so the first picture was taken in June, in summer. The second one was taken in winter, in December. So God knows, yeah? So what happened? <laughs> what will happen in the exam? Okay, then the first one was snapped when it was on holiday, while the second one was taken during the academic year. These things in both, just your imagination. They are cliches, definitely. So learn by heart only one variant. 
don't try to invent something. Don't try to invent, uh, I don't know, something very clear or something very smart to show off with your vocabulary. So if you want to show off with your vocabulary, learn it at home. Because when you come at the exam, you're so nervous that you definitely will forget all your English. So that's why I again tell you, you must learn it by heart to get rid of all these problems. So about the third sentence, you say, as you can see, these pictures have something in common, although there are a few, a few different pictures as well. Again, your intonation, you show that you're just inventing it right now and you have very good flow of speech, so you're so clever. And uh, that's why, give me my 20 points. So, the second chapter, I'd like to begin by pointing out basic similarities. So here, at least you should have three. Three similarities. So you start like this. Let's look at these pictures and take. To begin with, very important fact which I forgot to tell you. Guys, when we talk about pictures, we should say in the picture. Because when we talk about uh, the thing which is there, we say in the picture, not on the picture. On the picture, it's like you have, I don't know, a notebook. And there, there you can find a pen. This is on the picture. So, but in the picture, you have everything uh, there. So, like this. To begin with, in the picture one and in the picture uh, two, you can see people. Similarity. This is similarity. No problems. So, people, people, okay. You can say that in the picture one and in the picture two, you can see children. Very simple. You don't need to dig deeper, definitely. Okay, as well as that, uh, in both pictures, you can see celebration. Why not? Moreover, I can tell you that in both pictures, you can see presents. That's it, guys. You have three similarities. Okay. Next one, three. However, one can easily see a number of differences between the two photos. In the first place, and you start showing differences. Here, please be attentive, for example. In the first place, in the picture one, you can see a family, while in the second picture, you can see friends. So in, in one thing, you should have this thing while, while in the second picture, you can see something else. In the second place, uh, in the first picture, you can see New Year, while in the second picture, you can see a birthday party. So, in addition, I'd like to tell you that in the first picture, we can see just three people, while in the second picture, we can see five. So, you're ready. It is done. It's very easy. You don't need, again, you don't need to dig deeper. Everything is here, take everything. So, and very important thing, use very simple structures. Don't try to show up to make compound sentences. No, you will be nervous, you will forget English and it will cause lots of problems. Don't do that. Then we go and we see, uh, speaking about my preferences, I would choose, I would choose the first one, rather than the second one. Let me explain why. First, I like New Year very much. Second, I prefer celebrating all the holidays with my family. Third, I like happy people. Well, I think that's it. Thank you for your attention. So can you see? It is easy as ABC, guys. You were so nervous about task three and task four. So again, in my materials, I sent you these cliches. You can use them. I believe that I helped you really much with that. So your task is just to learn and to pass it with flying colors. Moreover, one interesting thing. This is a website which will definitely help you to pass your exam. So uh, 
I'll send you a link in the chat a little bit later. What should you do? You come here, yeah, and you can see something about 50 variants of speaking exam. You can train it yourself. Uh, after that, at the very end, you can see such a picture. You have finished test. Here you can see a link, or you can listen to yourself again, yeah? Uh, and uh, you can push the button to convert. What I offer you, um, I think at five o'clock you can start. Uh, my offer to you, I'm really happy that you came to me and that's why I want to thank you for that and help you a little bit. So uh, you can train your skills on this website. You then can download it. After that, in the chat, you will see a Google disk uh, link. Please, first one hour, in the first one hour, all people who will download their recordings on this Google disk, yeah? I'll check your speech. I'll put all your mistakes according to Russian national exam criteria. So, uh, and, but you have one hour, I remind you. Please, uh, I want you to sign your uh, voice recordings like your surname and uh, your name, okay? And uh, your school. It will be really great, please. So like, for example, Alexander Chalakhan, uh, 125. Okay, I don't know. So something like this, okay? So uh, what is the thing here? Uh, in the, uh, on this website, I can uh, tell you that you have a text, you have this uh, one and a half minute to prepare, but the only minus here that you can't skip. So at the exam, if you finished earlier, you can push the button to start the exam. And for example, you needed 30 seconds to read the text. Yeah. So, and uh, you have time to prepare more. You can push the button to start the exam and you start recording your voice. But on this website, you can't. So I don't think that it's a problem, but it is a very good way to train your skills and uh, to look at that uh, and to listen to you. Don't afraid of such thing. Um, don't, uh, don't be afraid of listening to your voice recordings because it's very important. You, sometimes people are really shy. Oh no, I have such a disgusting voice. So uh, guys, uh, people can hear you every day. So, and they don't think that your voice is really disgusting. So that's why, that's why. Listen to yourself, try to find mistakes. Even you can train it and send to your teacher and your teacher will check this thing. Uh, moreover, one thing I forgot to tell you about reading. Definitely when, I'm sure, I'm sure 100%, when, you're, when you'll get your, when you'll pass your exam, when you're trying to pass your exam, task number one, reading. There will be words which you don't know. And absolutely, and this is absolutely normal. Why do they do that? They want to check your uh, knowledge uh, of reading rules. So that's why maybe some intuition, I don't know, some rules to check how can you use them on practice. So that's why don't be afraid of that thing. Don't panic if you see that something went wrong. It's okay, if you have one mistake, you'll get your one point, definitely. Um, so, I think I've finished. So, uh, I'm really happy uh, that we have done that. Uh, I helped you, I believe. So, and I'm really ready to answer all your questions, guys, as I promised. Hello, Maria. Uh -huh. I'm preparing a hard exam. The exam, if I understand you correctly, then the main thing is not to be afraid to speak. Absolutely, you don't need that. So, because, okay, just imagine we live in Russia, yeah? And it's not our native language. And it is absolutely normal to have mistakes. 
I'm not saint also. I also can have mistakes. We, we are all people because we're nervous, for example. Yeah, so it's normal, absolutely. And uh, you, uh, when you're talking, you, I don't know how to say that. Uh, you, okay, I'll give you one interesting fact. Uh, when I was at the third year at university, I'm a bachelor degree. Uh, I was uh, an interpreter at World Cup Championship. So, and I had an opportunity to talk with um, uh, a boy from Mexico. So, and I was really afraid, so nervous. Oh, how they can get my, my voice, maybe I'm so strange. But when I started talking to him, he told me that I have perfect English. So that means foreigners really appreciate your effort. That's why you don't need to be afraid talking because so definitely if you, let's take us Russian people. So when somebody comes to us, yeah, and they say, привет, я хочу тебя спросить. So it's really pretty, yeah? People are trying to use our language and that's great. So guys, definitely you shouldn't be afraid of this thing okay i continue answering questions so um it was extremely inspiring thank you very much guys I'm, oh my voice is so beautiful thanks thank you very much so come to our faculty and maybe i'll be your teacher who knows so by the way uh you have a great opportunity to have double diploma by the way so London Diploma, we have our partners, University of London. So, and uh, everything is in English there and it will definitely help you to develop your speech level. Okay, where is the Google Disk to download the speaking task? It was in group chat. If you didn't have that, you, we can do it again. Uh, we can put this link here. How many languages do you know? I know three languages, Russian, English, and French how to remember it all it is easy guys how to remember that all it's easy so i mean cliches every time you don't need to learn it uh so you have a lot of time so we don't know when you're going to pass your russian national exam in june or in august god knows but never tells so what should you do open it 10 minutes and read it every day and it will definitely help you i remembered it like this Okay, well, I have a comment. It's forbidden to use a question. What about accommodation? Uh, no, it was not forbidden. I don't know why do you have such an information. Uh, as, as, uh, as far as I know, it was not forbidden because it's also a question. And according to criteria, we didn't have such a thing that it is forbidden. Well, okay, if you don't want to ask uh, what about, you can show off and use an absolutely different one. Okay, well, now I'm sure that I failed the exams. Why, Kirill? Why you are sure? What is the problem? Uh, I have one problem with the file that you get in the mail. It isn't working and show me an error. Okay, Alexandra, if you have such a problem, please use our email address of our Institute of International Education and we will send you everything. Uh, the question should be full. Um, okay, yes, it should be full. But what about the accommodation? So when uh, we had, uh, when I was checking uh, last year Russian national exam, so according to criteria, it was okay, absolutely. So that's why I don't have such information about what about and that is forbidden. Link for your Telegram bot, please. I don't have Telegram, sorry. I don't think so. What if I'm in 10th grade right now? Is it too late to start preparing myself for the exam? No, no guys. I can tell you one interesting thing. So I, I can prove again that Russian national exam is extremely easy. Why? Last year I had a girl, uh, she had pre-intermediate. She came to me um, in March. Guys, exam in June, she came to me in March. I was ready that she will fail her exam. So I can definitely tell you, she passed her speaking exam, 19 points she got with A2. So if you know that for Russian national exam, you should have B1 or B2. She had A1 and uh, the, for the whole exam, uh, I gave her all my tricks I, I knew and she passed it uh, 91, 91? 
now she is uh, on budget uh, in uh, some university. I don't remember which one. So it's never late, never too late. Okay, as it is uh, in the song of Nickelback, it's never too late, never too late. So that's why I start. Uh, have have some problems with opening with real folder from the cloud. Okay, right again our. Our email address is open. Are English American bloggers, actors, and movies good way to learn pronunciation? Whoa, this is a very tricky question. Why, guys? Uh, American and English one they're absolutely different. So I have definitely British pronunciation. So if you listen to Americans, they have like this. Wow, gotta tell you today like this. So they are trying to stretch the sounds. And I don't like their pronunciation at all because sometimes it's really difficult to understand what they're talking about. So uh, bloggers, uh, I don't think so. If you want to have classical one, no. If you want, it's just for speaking, not to pass some exams like IELTS maybe or TOEFL. So I would listen to some recordings uh, from scientists, I would say, because uh, sometimes they have slangish words and uh, in slang, they have different things. Be careful again about uh, American and English, not only pronunciation, but also vocabulary, also grammar, they are absolutely different. So, and you should pay, it, um, to, you should pay attention to that. But, uh, it doesn't matter which English you're going to use at Russian national exam. It is not sticked. So if you write favorite with you, or if you write favorite without you, it will be okay. Um, uh, what about the recording of speaking? Uh, here's a link uh, to Google, 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 sorry, to Google Disk. There you should download that there, and uh, I'll see. Uh, so what else? You're a cool teacher. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Will accent over the top give you additional points? Uh, yes. It will not even additional. It will help you not to get zero because I told you about weather and weather like this. So that's why, guys, that's your choice. Uh, but if you want to get great pronunciation, you should use the linguist, you should go to your linguistic faculty, maybe ours, because we have a very good course of phonetics. So guys, they take it into take it into account. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Expert, uh, it's very hard to speak in a small class in the same time with three other students. How to get ready for that? Uh, the same with okay. Uh, you mean Natalia? Uh, can you give a detail to your thing? Uh, do you mean speaking uh, Russian national exam or in general speaking to talk with three people? Uh, to, mm, because you, okay, uh, RT, this is your question. Uh, yes, you need to de describe them in different way because you will have different pictures, definitely. That's why you need to describe different. Be sure in yourself. Um, okay, I agree. There should be only a full question. What about accommodation? Not get a point. Okay. Do, um, I agree. Uh, I agree, definitely. Not I agree, but I agree. Uh, uh, there are three statements which explain I'd prefer in the fourth exercise are necessary all three uh, to come. Yes, uh, Alexandra Filipova. Yes, uh, this is uh, very important because first you need to have 15 sentences and they are like this. So if you have, let me have a look, um, three statements I would prefer. Ah, I got it. So about prefer, no, it's not necessary to cover all these things. You can use only one. Pay attention to time, guys. You can have two minutes, not more than two minutes. And if your speech is really slow, you may not finish even. That's why try it, try, try please at home. Train your skills uh, at this website, on this website and it will be okay. Uh, do you have Olympiad courses in our university? Uh, if you want, we can have. 
uh, I think that I always talk too fast and teachers don't understand me sometimes. Have you any advice about it? Really? You talk too fast? That's great. Katya, can you please, uh, I would like you to have this record, to send me a recording after that, please. I want to listen to that and I'll answer maybe your question. So for me, it's really interesting. But when you will sign your thing, right, please. Uh, Katya, uh, fast speech, okay? <laughs> so uh, what can, have you any advice? So my advice is <laughs> stay as it is because uh, we have a very small amount of people who can talk really fast because people are confused. So if you talk and you have mistakes, that is a problem. But if you talk and you don't have mistakes, that is absolutely okay. Because if you switch on, uh, I don't know, recording of C1, and you can hear that they are talking like, so uh, this is your plus, I would say. Do you have any courses to, pre to prepare for admission to the university? Uh, again, if you want, we can have. Uh, let's ask this question. In a different way, does doctor who has a good English pronunciation, uh, does doctor who has, uh, yeah, why, Emil, this is for you. Does doctor who has a good English pronunciation? Yes. So if you, yes, definitely. It will, uh, guys, after that, honestly, when you, you when you will finish uh, your uh, career or bachelor degree and you go to an interview yeah okay so uh, i can definitely tell on my experience from my definite experience uh, i uh, came to a language school uh, at the second uh, year of my university so and uh, i had an interview with the principal of this language school i was so nervous uh, my, my voice was like this so and um first we were talking in russian after that he asked me two questions so how are you alex so can you tell me what's this and when i opened my mouth with my phonetics he told me that is your place so phonetics plays an important role really important one in most cases um people won't even take won't even pay attention to your grammar or something like this they'll definitely pay attention to your pronunciation it we have very small amount of people with very good pronunciation in english and uh, sometimes native speakers even say that wow you're equal to british one so guys i think you can be absolutely sure that uh, this is the thing uh, you know which is really cool to hear okay let's go on um thanks a lot for information thank you guys so that you came um um i don't think it's correct to say in the picture in the picture i mean uh the article am i right so in the picture because you're talking about there not a picture because you're talking about a particular picture which is right now in the task and both of you the examiner and you uh you understand what you're talking about okay there will be other conferences uh which one alisa which conferences uh yes we will have lots of webinars so you can come and improve your skills definitely but no one can understand me even when they just doing nothing okay kirill i couldn't get your idea uh, can I say at the picture? No, Marusia, you can't say at the picture. You can say at the picture, look at the picture, the information in the picture, and something lies on the picture. Uh, thank you for tips. So, guys, not at all, absolutely. The exam, the exam, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Mm, I didn't understand the last part in comparing pictures. What should I say? Okay, I can come back, no problems. So that was a question from um, Sonia. Sonia Kozhevnikova, this is for you. I'll repeat again. So uh, just, just a second, guys, I need to show my screen for you. 
Okay, guys, I'll answer all your questions. Just wait, please. So, uh, if if you can see this thing, um, one second, please, one second. It doesn't want to work. Okay, never mind. So, uh, what should you say? Uh, first, this is the introduction. You describe what can you see in the first and in the second picture. Then you show similarities. You look at these pictures. You look at these pictures and you say this and this they have what people first of all yeah so and three things which they have in common i did not cover yeah so uh this the next block shows that you should tell people differences so in this picture we can have parents but in this picture we don't have them and you should have three such sentences I believe that I answered your question. Um, just a second. Um, oh my God, lots of, okay. Okay, Sonia, I believe that I answered your questions. Is it possible to get 20 points for speaking? Yes, guys, definitely. If you take into account all my tips and tricks, I promise you'll have 20. So you know that, uh, the heaviest are third and fourth tasks. They're seven and seven plus seven, 14, yeah? So uh, if you learn my cliches, definitely 20 will be yours. Okay. Um, let's go on. Справда, что в четвертом задании значительно нужно назвать по одному сходству, одному различию на тему, которая написана в четвертом пункте задания. Yes, you can name only one, but you won't have 12 or 15 sentences. That's why, in my opinion, to show your uh, speech, which is really good, and you, if you want to have uh, 20 points, definitely, you should name three and three. What's your maximal English speaking word in minutes? <laughs> Yaroslav, I'm sorry, I don't know. I didn't try to do that to count. Asked about doctor who from the serial. Ah, oh, okay, so Emil, I forgot your question. Uh, zero words per life. Okay, thank you so much. It was interesting and emotional. Okay, thank you too that you came. Um, I speak too fast as well. Should I mention fast speech too? Yes. Yes, Daria, you should also you you should also mention, and uh, I want you to. I'll just do that. I'll write some interesting facts. So you will get back um, a page A4. There will be your name and surname, all criteria, and my comments. Maybe what should you improve, or maybe everything is okay and you are perfect. So maybe you need to go and teach students right now. Okay. Is this becoming a rap battle? Okay, if you want, we can. Uh, thank you, this lesson is really useful. Okay. Uh, yes, I just showed that. Uh, okay, I can repeat. Uh, would, <clears throat> okay, Ksusha, this is for you. I again show you. Okay, so I'd like to begin by pointing out some basic similarities. Uh, just a second, I'll show you my screen. Wow. Uh, I'd like to begin by pointing out some basic similarities. To begin with, in the first picture and in the second picture, we can see children. So uh, as well as that, in the first picture and in the second picture, we can see celebrations. Uh, moreover, uh, in the first picture and in the second picture, oh, we can see presents. However, one can easily see a number of differences between the two photos. In the first place, in the first picture, we can see a family, while in the second picture, we can see friends. In the second place, in the first picture, we can see a new year, while in the second picture, we can see a birthday card. Uh, in addition, in the first picture, we can see uh, uh, that all people are, sm people are smiling, while in the second picture, we can't see such a thing. Okay, I believe that I answered your question. Okay, let's go in. Ah, okay, sorry. So you can, you can two, you can use two, you can uh, use two similarities and two differences. 
uh, but uh, be careful, you should have not less than 12 sentences, not less, it's very important. If you have 11, you'll get points. Okay. Any questions more? No? Guys, I'm still waiting for one minute. I'm waiting for your questions. Okay, that's it. So, if you don't have any questions more, guys, I'm really happy that you have chosen my webinar. That I believe that I was your savior and I believe that uh, it was really great for you. So, and uh, I helped you use my tips and tricks and um, uh, absolutely different. You can use different variants, it doesn't matter, but try it please which variant you're using, okay? So, for example, variant one, variant two, variant three. So, uh, start working. You have just one hour to send me your just uh, voices and we'll get acquainted a little bit. Thank you very much, guys. Wish you good luck to pass this exam with flying colors.